I'm Dr. Sean Keller, and if you're watching this video, you've probably been told that you have a few problems with your bite. So first, let's start about talking about what a healthy bite is. When you look at a healthy bite, you have the gum line even around the neck of each tooth. The gum line is even, and you don't see any bone loss. The enamel stops, and the bone starts. The back teeth should have enamel going down and the gum should be even on all the back teeth. If you see areas where the gum is uneven or where you start to see the root show, that's a sign of bone loss. So as you look around the mouth, you should look and you should see that the edges of the teeth are even, smooth, and if all the enamel is still there, there should be a nice edge of thick enamel with a little bit of translucency above it. Many as of, of us, if we don't have proper support on the back teeth, you'll start to see some signs of wear on the front teeth. Get a nice healthy bite. The back teeth should be taking most of the load. The front teeth should be barely touching or not touching at all. If the back teeth have worn down or the jaw position has changed, then the front teeth start to take some load. As we look at one of our x-rays here, you start to notice the bone levels around the teeth. The little black triangle in between each tooth should be shaped like a triangle. As we start to lose more bone, it gets taller and skinnier. Where the enamel, that's the white stuff you see here around each tooth, should be nice and pointy on top. And as it comes to a thin edge at the tooth, the bone should start. If you start to see that bone level drop, that's called bone loss. It's not normal healthy recession like some people may have told you. I have my mother who's 60 years old now and her bone level is right at the neck of each tooth because she has a nice bite. The jaw is a little bit like a nutcracker with the big strong healthy teeth at the back. We should have 12 molars, six on each side hitting each other. If those molars are taking the load then the front teeth shouldn't be taking much load at all. As you can see here the back molars have large big thick roots and they're meant to take the load. The front teeth they have much smaller, skinnier roots, and if they take any force at all, you'll start to see damage on the chewing surface of the tooth, or you'll start to see bone loss around the teeth. So as long as the pressure is on the back teeth where it should be, we're in good shape, provided the teeth are still having their points so that they can hit each other in the middle of each other, and the forces are along the center of the tooth. It's kind of like a bar stool. If you were to stand on a bar stool, you would want to balance yourself so they'd be standing right in the middle. If you were to stand on the outside edge, you'd be uneven. The same thing with teeth. If you start to hit on the outside edge of these, it starts to damage the bone around the teeth. And the back teeth can hit on edges they're not supposed to. That rocks the tooth within the socket and you'll start to see a gap form. So imagine this, as you rock back and forth, you're gonna see this little gap start to form and in that gap, it might look small in your mouth, but to bacteria, that's like the Grand Canyon to them. They look up there and they're like, whoa, look how big that is. I'm gonna get in there. <gasps> and they can fit in there and they can, they'll play with their kids in there and they start a little colony and they're living inside your gums and your bone tissue. They can spread to other areas that weren't hitting as hard and you'll start to see bone dissolving that's not even the worst part. These little bacteria, they get into your bloodstream and they can infect other organs. It's turning out that miscarried babies are often found the main cause of the miscarriage is bacteria, bacteria that started in our gums. If the bone loss reaches the spot where the root splits into two, this is called the frication. The colony of bacteria that gets in here is uncleansable and ultimately will lead to the loss of the tooth. It's important to catch the bone loss before it gets down to this part of the tooth where it becomes untreatable. Many of us have had restorations done on the teeth. If you had a plastic filling done like up here, they're great for a little while, but because they're made of plastic, they wear down over time. The edges can start to break down and where you're chewing on them, as that mills together, the back of the nutcracker mills together and you'll start to put pressure on the front teeth. The jaw is meant to close on a nice arc. As we close on a nice arc and as we chew, 
no matter what happens, you should only be hitting in those spots in the center of each tooth. We put a tiny magnet on and we can follow with the computer what your chewing motion is like and seeing if the way that your teeth are hitting are the cause of some of this wear and this bone loss or some of your other bite problems. If you have had some restorations done on your teeth, it's important that they be durable. Plastic fillings tend to wear down over time. So do the metal mercury fillings. The best material, if you have to have a re restoration, is porcelain, especially Emacs porcelain. It's very, very durable and it doesn't wear down over time. And if designed the right way, when you hit right in the center of it, it shouldn't change. One problem we sometimes see is when people have many different types of restorations in their mouth. Some of the fillings are getting shorter, some of them aren't. So as things change over time, your bite can become uneven. It's important to have your bite checked out to make sure that everything is hitting and wearing at the same rate. A front tooth normally has this bulletproof layer of enamel around it. There's about three millimeters of this durable material that protects before you get down into the soft dentin layer. The dentin layer wears seven times faster, plus the crystalline structure of the enamel, once perforated, is now not, doesn't have the integrity. So the shards of crystal start to shard away quicker and you'll see chipping and wearing and what took possibly decades and decades to wear away now happens in a matter of years once you get through the enamel layer. We'll be looking at your teeth too. We'll look at some of our photos that we took and we can monitor these over time. And if everything looks nice and smooth in one color, that's probably still enamel. But if you look in there and you see like a little bit of a different color there, then that's probably the dentin showing and that means that you've lost at least three millimeters of enamel. What that means is things are gonna wear much more quickly and there's probably some sort of bite problem going on. So let's take a look at your teeth and see what it looks like. Back molars are similar too. They have a nice thick layer of enamel on them. It looks a little bit different when you perforate the enamel on a back tooth. Many of us have had so many restorations over time, it's hard to tell how much we have left. But if you look at a regular tooth that hasn't had any wear, it'll be nice and have white and have the cusps like a mountain range. As you start to wear through one of those, it appears as a little pothole. Those potholes, once exposed, you don't even have to chew on it anymore for damage to happen. There's the hard crystalline structure around the outside and then there's the dentin showing in the middle and that just tends to dip down and wash away just from the normal acids and the food that we eat. So it's important to take care of those as soon as we find them. You ever seen the results of a neglected mouth? <laughs> Look, Seymour, this could happen to you. <laughs> Unless I take immediate action. Let's not forget that the back teeth's job is to take the pressure off the front teeth. And one millimeter on the back teeth is three millimeters in the front. So once you're through the dentin layer, it wears seven times faster. This can create some serious facial changes that make us look older than we really are. If you have a muscle imbalance, you may not notice any of the symptoms, but we'll see the signs in the teeth. Grinding is caused by muscles not being happy and they're trying to grind themselves into a better spot. Eventually, they're gonna get through the enamel and get to a spot that the muscles are a little happier with but your teeth are gonna be damaged afterwards. We also take a 3D image of your neck and of your skull, and we can see bone levels, we can look at your joint, and we can look at the jaw position. A normal, healthy joint has a socket, and it has the bone up in it. It kinda of looks like a light bulb, so it should be nice and round, and there should be plenty of space around it. If you start to see the teeth forcing the joint back, you'll start to see some changes. So this joint is right here. As we open and close, as long as the teeth are hitting in the right way and closing on a nice arc, the joint should always have plenty of space around it and it should always stay lined up. It shouldn't hit in such a way that it pushes this way or this way or this way and it should also have a nice smooth silent sound to it. There's a little cartilage disc, it kind of looks like a lightsaber and it sits right on top of the head. So as long as everything's balanced the right way, that'll sit there and the cartilage protects us from rubbing bone on bone. If the back teeth have started to wear down or we're missing some of them, or they've been made out of a weak material, you'll start to see changes in the joint. So the joint 
will, as the teeth hit together, it will drive the joint in the wrong direction and you'll see the little cartilage disc snap out. It makes a little popping sound when we open and close. So sometimes as simple as changing the height of some of the fillings, we can get that joint to stop clicking and popping and stop the damage. It does require some very precise measurements of the teeth. So if a joint has been damaged enough, it stops looking like that nice little light bulb and it starts to look more like, you guessed it, a golf tee. So let's try to save our golfing for the links instead of in our joint. Some of these joints don't just look like a golf tee or a broken golf tee, they can even start to look like a club head. So can you imagine how well that works as you open and close? It's not very healthy. All of this can be absolutely painless. Many people have no symptoms at all. It's kind of like your knee. It's getting thinner and thinner and thinner until you get bone on bone and then you require knee replacement. It's our job to try to find out when this is happening really, really early. We don't want to let it get to the point that it's painful and the joint's blown out. That same muscle that's pulling there, it attaches to the inside of the back of your eye socket or your sphenoid bone and your sinuses too. So a lot of people when they get eye headaches or problems with their eyes or vision changes or they start to get the headaches that come around right here or come here or come here, that can be related to a joint problem or a bad bite. It can also be the cause of headaches that happen here or in the back of your head too or even neck pain. Poor posture doesn't just mean that you're looking forward and it doesn't look right. It's very unhealthy. There's very important blood vessels that serve the brain fresh oxygen and the right nutrients that drain the brain of the toxins of byproducts of metabolism and the spinal cord. That's like the big ethernet cable that serves the brain. If you're in a forward head posture, that's kinking all of those, the vessels leading in and out in the lymphatic drainage. So what happens if you've got a garden that's being fed by a hose and somebody comes in and, and they step on that hose? You're gonna ruin the flow. What happens when you ruin the flow to your head? Over time, those people don't do well. We're seeing some very amazing results right now of people that get their posture in the right spot. Some diseases that we had no idea what caused them are starting to get better as we work on people's bite and their posture. So when we're trying to help you decide if you have some bite problems or you will have bite problems in the futures, there's a few questions we should ask ourselves. Are there 12 molars in the back taking the load off the front teeth? Does the tech scan or computer show balance in the 50-50 range with most of the force in the back? Each tooth is meant to take a certain percentage of the force and if certain teeth are taking too high of a percentage, you're gonna see problems with that tooth over time. Is there bone loss on the radiographs? Do we see the little perfect triangle shaped like this or is it starting to be shaped like this as the bone level drops beneath the enamel? Other things for us to think about, is there any loss of facial support? As those back teeth begin to mill together, the chin gets closer to the nose over time and you might notice the face start to change as we get older. A lot of us think that as we get older, the chin is just supposed to get closer to the nose. That's just a sign of being older. That's a sign of a bad bite. There are people who are in their 90s who have perfect bites and their face hasn't changed much from a height standpoint. The skin actually doesn't look as wrinkled because it hasn't been wrinkled by tense muscles underneath over time. If the front teeth haven't been taking any load and they're the proper length and they're angled the right way, they support the lips. If the teeth are tipped back in or we've been missing some back teeth, everything comes back and it creates this sunken in look. Have you seen the person whose chin and nose is out further than their lips? It's because the teeth aren't supporting the lips in the right way. The teeth are tipped back so the lips curl in and it looks like you have small little thin lips or no lips at all and you kind of have like a chin and nose that are bigger compared to that. So if we can get the teeth in the right position and we don't have to do with this with braces, sometimes a simple little layer of porcelain over the front can get things in the right position, then you notice a better proportion to the whole face and we look younger. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. 
And don't call me Shirley. I like to look at somebody's lips and try to guess what their teeth look like underneath before they smile. Most of the time I get it right. If the back teeth have been restored or they have some wear problems, you'll notice that they mill down over time and we start to hit on the front teeth too much. The biggest problem with the front teeth hitting besides the wear and the bone loss is the muscle right here. As soon as we hit, the teeth don't like that. So this muscle contracts to pull the jaw back. That makes it look like we have a double chin all the time. All that really is is an overworked large muscle that's tense pulling the jaw back. This double chin look can go away with a relaxed bite. This really hits home for me. These pictures are of me around 2005. I was going through bite treatment, mainly to take care of migraines, headaches, neck pain, some sleep problems, and I was getting bone loss too. So the day my orthotic went in, I noticed my double chin was gone. And then about two weeks later, I noticed my migraines were about 90% gone. And my neck was feeling better. And then I noticed that my chin was continuing to move forward. I was getting a stronger chin, which I'd always kind of wanted. And then my uh, forward head posture was getting better. And um, I was actually getting a little bit taller. So all in all, there were some pretty positive facial changes that happened that I, that I was pretty excited about. The side muscles will bulge out and make it look like you're lifting as hard as you can, like a bicep builder, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, if you're being Arnold Schwarzenegger with your masseter muscles if you have a bad bite. So those will get bigger over time. It's this pig and his cock friends broke my ribs, my leg, and my jaw. You broke that jaw? You deserved it. Why did you do that? Why? Yeah, why? I was having a bad day. Like now? Like now! <laughs> the good news is, if we balance the bite, these can thin out. I've been accused of doing cheek implants on somebody because we made the muscles relax so much the cheekbones stood out higher. And our nose looks bigger when everything else around it isn't in the right position. So we start to tilt our head like this, but the jaw pulls back. So the nose is by far the furthest thing out on the face. If we can get the head posture to come upright and the jaw to come where it's supposed to, the nose looks smaller, the chin looks in proportion, and we're actually much healthier because we're getting the proper amount of air all night and all day. All these tense muscles over time cause the skin above them to wrinkle up. So muscles tend to contract and they kind of contract like ridges. So as they contract, the skin over them wrinkles too. The good news is, as we treat this and relax the muscles, the muscles shrink, they relax, and the tissue over them over time can start to even out. One of the other things we notice is muscles of the neck. So a lot of the muscles of the neck and the posture decide where the jaw position is. So if your teeth hit and the jaw has to respond to protect the teeth, then you're gonna notice tense muscles. You can see here that her neck muscles, especially on the one side, is pulling down. If you look at her from the side view, that looks like she has a double chin, when really, it's just an angry muscle. Angry, tight, tense muscles make the skin on the surface look more wrinkled than it really is. If it's like that long enough, these wrinkles tend to become ingrained. But once we relax them, you'll see months and months later, it starts to smooth out and look like it used to. Eventually, just age catches up with us all, with sun damage and just with collagen not doing what it used to. But why add something like muscle tension to it to make it even worse? So when we balance the bite, you'll notice things like muscle smoothing out and the skin starts to look smoother and smoother years later. This is one of my favorite examples of the double chin look. When you look at her from a side view, it looks like she's got a little bit of turkey waddle down there. When you look at the front, you can see that that's just a muscle in the front. So by letting the jaw go to where it's supposed to do, the muscle sucks up and she looks much, much younger. The skin eventually smooths out and we looks like we had a facelift or that's actually not the proper thing to say because facelifts don't look natural. They leave the jaw and the muscles in the wrong spot and they just ah, tighten the skin there. So to prevent aging, make sure you've got a proper bite.
We're calling it the non-surgical facelift because people are looking 10 to 15 years younger and we're doing things that not even the plastic surgeon can do. If the bones are still in the wrong spot and the muscles are still bulged out and causing the skin over them to wrinkle, how does a plastic surgeon take the skin off and tighten it and staple it down and have it look very good? It does look a little bit better in, in some cases, but some people get this kind of like scared look and they still have muscles and bones that are in the wrong position. Doesn't it seem a lot better to physiologically test and figure out where the muscles and the jaw should go and put it there without surgery. By just changing the height of some of the back teeth of the fillings, we can make all this happen, but it has to be precise so the muscles like it. That's where our computer comes into play. We've all seen celebrities getting too much plastic surgery in an attempt to look younger. Maybe they should have had their bite balanced instead. I've noticed as I've watched celebrities age, kind of a hobby of mine, that the ones with a great bite, like no abfraction, no bone loss, and the, and the teeth line up right, and the jaws in the right position, they age very gracefully, like Christy Brinkley, for example. Here's the worst part about all this, is the worse it gets, the more upset the muscles are, the more angry the joint is, and the further back our jaw gets trapped, and the further our head goes forward, and the more upset the whole system is, so it accelerates. We're our muscles are more angry, so they're trying to get out of it more, so we grind away more, the teeth get shorter, the chin gets closer to the nose, so it gets worse and worse and worse over time. This doesn't get better. Some people have their headaches start to go away a little bit because they've ground themselves into a spot where the muscles don't feel too bad, but everything's still too short. And eventually the teeth are gonna wear out and we're gonna run into a spot where they're not even restorable. So if we start to see these signs, it's important to either take good documentation with our photos and our x-rays so we can monitor it closely over the years, or it's time to act. So as long as we have good records and you stay with us, we can pay attention to this over time and together we can decide when it's time to do something and what to do because there's many different types of treatment. So here's just a little news clip of uh, when I was on the news recently talking about TMJ and how we can take care of somebody's bite. It has changed over the years. Today, patients can get more than just a great looking smile. Dr. Sean Keller, along with the team at Smiles by Design, focus on offering personalized total health care combined with an artistic touch to enhance their patient's natural smile, resolve problems caused by TMJ, or help them look younger with facial dentures. TMJ stands for temporal mandibular joint, and that's your jaw joint where your jawbone attaches to your skull. And so TMJ actually, it, the disorder means the disorder of the joint. And so if you're teeth don't fit together properly, that can push the jaw into a bad position and that can cause migraines, jaw pain, popping and clicking when you open, it can cause neck pain. We call it the great imposter because it disguises itself as so many other disorders. People go to a lot of different doctors before they finally figure out that it's TMJ the whole time. We do a very thorough exam, so we take models of the teeth, we take x-rays, we have a 3D scanner that allows us to look at the neck and the head in all dimensions and we can actually look at it from any angle. And if we see changes in the bones from that, it gives us a good idea of, of how it's going. The next thing we do is we, we use the, the neuromuscular technology from Myotronics and we can read how your muscles work as the jaw opens and closes. We can even use computerized mandibular scanning so we can move the jaw on the computer screen so as people move their jaw I can look at it on the screen and trace how it's moving and we're looking at the muscle activity as that happens and if we see aberrations in the muscles then we know if things aren't fitting properly. I'm tired of hearing that guy talk. Let me tell you how it is. Depending on where we put these little stickers you can see the jaw relax or get upset depending on where we put it. So after about an hour of relaxation, we can get the jaw into the perfect spot where the muscles just look even and we know your bite will be healthy right there. They're strained, fatigued, and overworked. Over time, these supporting muscles develop painful muscle spasms. As the muscles contract or shorten from spasm, they also change the underlying skeletal structure, leading to an unattractive and or painful change throughout the body. 
Forward head posture, like a turtle head, changes to the spine, uneven hips, legs, and feet can become painful and compromise overall function and health. A narrow arch form can force the tongue back into the throat and block the airway causing snoring, sleep apnea, and other breathing disorders. This affects both children and adults and has severe health consequences and complications. This includes high blood pressure, stroke, insomnia, heartburn, acid reflux, daytime sleepiness and fatigue, along with diabetes, ADD, ADHD, and bedwetting. The goal is to return the jaw to its normal, healthy, decompressed position. With proper treatment, muscle spasms relax and disappear, allowing the muscles to return to their natural, ideal length. As a result, the jaw returns to a more pleasing position, both physiologically and aesthetically. The treatment for these problems is to create a temporary appliance that's worn over the bottom teeth, usually for a period of about three or more months, allowing the jaw to slide forward. The jaw joints decompress as fatigued muscles relax. If the appliance is not worn, the jaw moves back again and the cycle of pain returns with facial compromise of the receding of the jaw position. The treatment choices vary according to the age, pain patterns, and level of complexity of the patient's needs. Typical treatment for an adult with pain patterns would involve the use of an orthotic. If the teeth are in need of structural support, the bite can be reconstructed in porcelain. The natural, beautiful ceramic protects a tooth like a cast protects a broken bone. With this, we do our testing and we have what we call an orthotic. It's just an acrylic appliance that it might look like a night guard or a splint like, like you've had in the past, but this one's very, very different. It's been calibrated perfectly to balance your muscles so they balance out. So many times these are thicker or thinner in different spots depending on that particular person. So you can't really trade these with your friend and get the same effect. It's balanced specifically just for you. And as you heal and change, it's gonna change too. So for example, right when we put this in, it's gonna be balanced perfectly and I'm gonna be adjusting it. But suddenly, that's gonna create relaxation in the neck and people are gonna stand up a little bit straighter. But then it's gonna be hitting just in the front again. So I need to adjust it and get you balanced again using the computer. You can't do this without today's technology and with a computer. We can eyeball it and get close, but if you want the precision and the perfection so that we can have a good bite, 60, 70, 80, who knows? With today's technology, some of us are gonna probably break 150. Uh, this is one of those things that's gonna help us do that. Design this with a very tough, durable acrylic that has the points and bumps and grooves like your natural teeth should have had so that when you chew back and forth and left and right and forward and backward, you only hit in the middle in the right spot so that those muscles are all balanced and the joint is in the right spot so that if it was starting to look like that golf tee, it can start to round out. That's the beauty of this is bones they'll change and grow back to the way they're supposed to be if you just take the pressure off of them. How come this doesn't happen in your elbow in your, or on your knees? When in real life can you take the pressure off of your knee two, three years straight? You can't unless you get in a wheelchair. With this, we actually put something on top of the teeth. So we actually pull the joint out of its extreme pressure and depressurize it. And then the bone just decides, well, you know, no sense remodeling and being this weird broken golf tee shape if I can remodel and become like a nice smooth light bulb again. So as soon as we get the pressure off of that by wearing the orthotic, things start to reverse without surgery. So here's a patient with the orthotic just on the back teeth. So many times if the front teeth are already touching, we just put on the back teeth. It's intended for you to wear day and night. It's not just a nighttime appliance. We're trying to train your bones and your posture and your jaw to go in the right spot. So eventually, instead of the jaw coming up and having to shift every time, it can just close on a nice smooth arc and hit on the back teeth at the same time and, until everything starts to look and feel better. If we didn't have a lot of those symptoms, the pain and the migraines, then we're just doing this until the computer says that everything's hitting in the center of each tooth and the muscles look good when we clench and when we chew. It's very difficult to do this without today's technology. I've invested a lot of time and education and money into the proper equipment to do this the right way so we can have a bite for life. Oh, yeah. It's your professionalism that I respect.
Once we've decided to do orthotic therapy, we're in what we call phase one. Phase one is where you're wearing the acrylic appliance on your back teeth and we're spending some time just verifying that it's perfect, making sure that we like the way that your muscles feel, that you're feeling good in the appliance, and that everything is progressing the right way. We're verifying every step of the way to ensure perfection before we go to the next step. Very, very safe, elegant way to do this. There's other types of orthotics too. Let's talk about those. So the fixed orthotic is very much like the removable orthotic, the plastic one that you can take in and out, except it's made of white acrylic. So this one, we use our computer to design where the bite should be. We use an appliance to put it in the mouth. And then this one, you can barely tell it's in place. This one doesn't come in and out. It's bonded on top of your teeth. We still haven't done anything to the teeth underneath yet. So here's what we call the fixed orthotic. It's tooth colored and it bonds right on top of your lower teeth. Sometimes we bond it to the top teeth, sometimes we bond it to both depending on what you need. At first, when we put this in, you're gonna notice a change in the face. Possibly some other changes that will happen take a little getting used to. Have you ever had a raspberry seed stuck in one of your teeth? I have before and when you bite together, like oh, it'll drive you crazy. Imagine 10 raspberry seeds on every tooth. At first, that's what this feels like. It's what we call a deprogrammer. So right when we put it in the beginning, I especially like to have it high in the back so we can create a lever system and kind of depressurize that joint. And I have it a little taller than it should be. It's almost like if even the right thing for my arm were to put it right here, let's stretch it a little further past so it can heal better. So I have it a little too tall at first so we can get faster healing. I feel like it shaves months off the total treatment time because most people, they got a busy life. They got a lot to do. So they're more interested in me getting this done a little bit quicker. So if it means I can be a little bit taller in the beginning to do that, most people want that. Once you get through that enamel layer, you're into the soft layer. Things wear a lot faster. So that's why we want to catch this early so you get, get to this point. But if you're already there, don't worry, we got a plan. We can take care of it too. So we scan the teeth, we put it into the computer, and virtually we design it first. This is one of my favorite parts. I got my start in artistry with drawing and with crayons, well, probably before that with finger paint. But the next thing I got to was to doing acrylics and painting. Hopefully you've been in the office and seen some of my paintings of scenery around the world, or uh, my latest passion is uh, painting the Seahawks, especially after our Super Bowl win but now we're getting into doing this virtually on the computer. So with that same artistry we use with the paintings, we can use it with your smile. But having something on the computer and moving it to the mouth, there can always be a little difference. So again, for a verification step, we always try it out first. So now we design it on the computer, we mill it in our machine. Man, this thing's cool to watch this thing mill and make the little appliances. And then we come to you and we try it in and see how it feels. Of course, there's that deprogramming phase where we gotta let your jaw go to the right spot, but you can let us know how it looks and how it feels. Are the teeth, are they a little too long? Are they a little too far out? Did we push your lips out too much and make them look too big like Mick Jagger? Or are they still back too far? So we basically sit there and play with it all. Once we get it in the mouth, it's just very tough acrylic. So like your fingernails, we can change it until it looks right. I can add from it, I can take from it, I can make it wider, shorter, I can change the length of everything until it looks and feels perfect. This way, there's no mistakes later on. If you've ever seen a case of bad veneers or teeth that don't look natural, that's somebody who skipped this ever so important step. By doing this, that can't happen. If there's anything that we both don't love about it or our family doesn't like, tell us. Let's make it perfect until we move to the more permanent step. Most of the time in the end, people want to go for a much lighter shade, but we try to make the orthotic match the shade that you have so people don't notice it's in place at this phase. Fixed orthotic in place and we have you wear it for a little while. We'll have you chew, we'll be testing the muscles, and we'll be making sure that everything is hitting right in the center of the tooth the way it should be. In the beginning, there's a little bit of an adaptation phase and we want it to be this nice soft acrylic while this goes on. What's well, hard acrylic, hard enough to be strong, but compared to porcelain or enamel, it's soft and it gives a little. So it's comfortable and we're waiting for the symptoms to go away. If you had no symptoms, we're waiting for the muscles 
and the computer to say that those are, everything's balanced and that you're hitting in the center of each tooth and you're not going to be causing bone loss and loose teeth over time. So first we do it in the plastic or acrylic with the orthotic. Once we verify the muscles look good, then we do it in the porcelain later. You can really see how the fixed orthotic works here. So as you look at this right here, these are the lower teeth where the enamel's gotten really, really thin on the front. So build it up with the fixed orthotic first, verify that we like the way it looks and that you can still talk and chew and the facial changes look nice. Then we'll think about phase two later. Maybe it'll be some porcelain. Some people choose to just pop this off and make a removable version too. It's up to you. It's up to your lifestyle, your budget, what's going on in your life right now. If we're on a budget, maybe many people have kids in college and it's not the right time. So we can make a removable one that's much more affordable and keeps the bite healthy. Some people want more of a permanent fix for the rest of their life and they don't want to think about it anymore. So they'll go and do one of the porcelain restorations. One of the things I hear a lot is people don't like work that fails. They've spent tons and tons of money on work in their mouth that has failed over time. This Emax porcelain bonds permanently to the tooth and it doesn't come off. It doesn't chip, it doesn't break. Less than one out of a thousand ever give us a problem. When we make sure that the bite is right with that and balance the muscles, now we're making sure that not just the porcelain is safe, but that the bone around the teeth is safe too. It'd be a shame to have a beautiful porcelain veneer have the whole tooth fall out because the bite wasn't right. So if we balance the bite with the computer and use porcelain restorations, this stuff can outlast us. So you don't have to worry about wasting tons and tons of money on dental work that's gonna fail. So I know what patients like. I've been doing this long enough that I know what makes people go out there and say nice things about me in the community. They like it when it looks great. And I mean looks fantastic. It looks natural and it looks fresh. They like it when they can chew. They like it when they don't have problems chewing the foods that they love. They really love it when it's comfortable. They don't have any pain anymore, like they don't have migraines, headaches, and their posture's better. And most importantly, they like it when it lasts. This is Kim. She worked for me for about 15 years and she was great. She saw smile after smile that we changed and after she saw the facial changes that happened, she wanted it for herself. She, I thought she was beautiful, but she had what she thought was a little bit of a big nose and she thought she had a little bit of a double chin and she had the forward head posture so you notice a little bit of a, a hump back, starting back there. That would have surely gotten worse every year as she got older. So after she saw enough smiles that I treated, she wanted it for herself. So we restored the bite. We will show in a picture here in a minute, but we brought her jaw forward. It sucked up that little bit of stuff underneath her chin and her posture got better. So here's her smile. You can see the back teeth had that bone loss. She was quite young. She was in her early 30s. So we measured her bite. We relaxed the jaw and, and made for her the fixed orthotic. You can see here it is right here on top of the lower teeth. You can barely notice it, right? If you look close enough, you can see that she's got the fixed orthotic on top of her teeth and it's bonded together. That little area right in there, you can't floss there anymore. You're gonna have to use a water pick to squirt in between there. So let's say we get through phase one. The orthotic went in, we like the way it feels, we like the way it looks. Phase one is done, success. So what can we do for phase two? One option is a removable orthotic. We can just go back to the one that comes in and out. This is a very durable removable orthotic that actually has porcelain on it. So we can make one that'll last a lifetime that comes in and out. The older ones used to have some metal clips on them like this. We have some newer ones made out of zirconia that are all white. Most people are opting to have the teeth actually restored because having something removable there's a chance that you could lose it. Another option is orthodontics. Sometimes we do that. An another option is porcelain on some of or all of the teeth. So when people hear porcelain, they think crown and they think, hmm, do I have to grind the tooth to a nub and get a crown or one of those veneers where I've heard that they reduce the tooth? Technology has changed. We can just bond right on top of the tooth without doing any drilling at all. I've done lots of cases where we didn't touch the teeth other than bond right on top of them with individual Emax pieces. 
has already had restorations on it, then we have to get those restorations out. And instead of just being a piece that goes on top, it'll go down inside where the restoration was. Or if there was already a crown, it'll go around the whole tooth. This is a porcelain crown. So unlike the old metal ones or the gold ones, this is made of the same stuff that those little snow caps were, or one of our veneers It's still laser fused to the tooth. It's just much more beautiful and much healthier. And on the x-ray, it looks like enamel. So we can see a problem before it starts there. Get rid of any rough spots on the tooth and we kind of just freshen up the enamel so we've got enough room to bond our veneer in place. If a tooth has a point that's out a little bit too far, we may polish that off and we kind of round it up so that when we laser fuse the porcelain to the tooth, it's gonna stay there for a lifetime. These are like a bulletproof coat on the tooth. They're beautiful too. So once we bond them into place permanently, they're on there so strong that you could extract the tooth by the veneer if you wanted to, and they don't leak over time. So once we get them bonded in place, they're intended to last a lifetime.